and that's not even the worst the state is going to face. We're going to talk a lot more about the fallout and the impact now with our chief economic correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, our chief political analyst, Matthew Dowd, also Craig Fugate, who is FEMA administrator from 2009 to 2017. But Rebecca, let me begin with you. We heard it was Senator Rubio say Florida's never seen anything like this. When a state like Florida, a state so big, gets hit so hard, the economic fallout immense. And clearly the human devastation, our number one focus for today. But long term, this economic consequence is going to be grave. It's going to be massive. If the estimates hold as they stand today, Irma will be the most expensive storm in history, estimated at $200 billion in damage. And when you couple that with Hurricane Harvey, it's a one-two punch. Hurricane Harvey could be the second most costly storm in history. Those assessments still coming in. That would put both of them at more expensive than Hurricane Katrina. And keep in mind, as we've been hearing from our correspondents in the field all day long, this is a highly dense, highly populated area where the storm's path is heading. So you've got eight and a half million properties that are in the path of this storm. You have millions of people now without power. You have gas outages. This is a kind of thing that's going to take a long time to clean up from. And then you say, like, the human cost there is so high. What happens, though, with the economy? You're taking money out of the economy, all those losses, but also rebuilding will pump it back up. Exactly. In general, what happens in a hurricane is you have the near-term loss, but the longer-term gain from all of the construction and new business that comes back in. But when you look at these two storms back to back, many analysts and economists believe that you're going to wait to see that rebound in things until early next year. These are highly populated areas, and there's been a big boom in a lot of these areas, especially along that west coast of Florida, Tampa, Cape Coral, Fort Myers. There's been a huge amount of new building in those areas, and all of that now is in the risk of harm's way. This is just the beginning for that. Matt Dowd with us as well. Matt, you were advising the White House during Hurricane Katrina, George W. Bush. So far, it appears what we've seen here Pretty seamless teamwork between state and local officials and the federal government. Yeah, fortunately, or and unfortunately, the lessons we always learn seem to be in the, in the aftermath of tragedies in this. And people forget often that Hurricane Katrina came, and then three weeks later, Hurricane, another devastating hur hurricane came right after Katrina, Hurricane Rita, in the midst of this. Mother Nature doesn't discriminate and is not partisan, and they expect our leaders uh, not to be partisan in response to this. I think the big differences between where there's been success and where there hasn't been success, as we saw with Harvey and now we're seeing here, is the local leaders, state and local officials that show up in a much different way, in a much more forewarned way, and come to the brunt of it, and then have an expectation the federal government's going to respond And to one that. of the things we have seen is President Trump emphasizing his support for the state and local leaders. I think President Trump, if you look at this, and President Trump's had difficulty since he, the day he was inaugurated, this is probably the best week of his presidency in the midst of this devastation and tragedy. He's shown up, he's been responsive, he's been there, he's come to, to come to the table with all the things he needs to do in the midst. So I think you have to give President Trump a very good grade in the midst of this and, and how he's responded to this. But there is going to be a challenge ahead for the entire political system. Yeah, no one knows the long-term effects of this, how the federal government's going to deal with this. As Rebecca said, it's going to be exceedingly costly with a budget that we're already in trouble in. And I think what the president did on the debt ceiling, a bipartisan approach he had to the debt ceiling and the funding so far, is the direction the American public wants him to go. Okay, Matt Dow, thanks for much.